Question 5 says a demolition ball is used by a crane to break the wall of a building. The demolition ball of mass. So we have a mass there. Let me just uh, write it down. A mass of uh, 1250 kgs. Um, is lifted uh, by the crane to a point R at a height of 5.8 meters. So we have a height of 5.8 uh, meters above its lowest position in 60 seconds. Uh, so we have some time T of um, 60 seconds. Uh, ignore air friction. Okay. And then the first question uh, 5.1 says uh, define the term power in words. So uh, power, the full number of power is given as work uh, divided by uh, delta T. Uh, so from this formula, you can define power as the rate at which work is done. Right. Uh, 5.2 says calculate the average power dissipated by the crane in lifting the demolition ball to point R. Um, so, okay. The average power dissipated by the crane in lifting the demolition ball to point R. Uh, the height is from to point R is 5.8 meters, right? We have already rolled that down. And then, okay, power average is given as uh, force uh, multiplied by a velocity average. So what this question wants us to do is to determine uh, the force determine the velocity average and then we have the power average so uh the domain knowledge of a crane is that it moves at constant speed or constant velocity it doesn't accelerate or decelerate at any point of the motion so what that means is that um the forces when the ball is moving up are balanced because it's hanging we don't have normal force frictional force or any of that the only force that's acting on the ball apart from the force exerted by the crane is force of gravity so that is to say um f crane uh, is equals to uh, minus f g right because these forces are balancing out and then uh, the demolition ball is moving at constant speed so that is equals to minus uh mass multiplied by gravity and then the mass is uh the mass we already have it is minus oh it's actually not minus the mass is 1250 kg and then force of gravity uh minus 9.8 right and then uh, the minuses uh, will give you a positive and now um let me put that in the calculator and see what i get uh 1250 Multiply by 9,8, uh, that is uh, 12,250 uh, um, uh, newtons, right? And then now what's left is velocity average. Um, we know from grade 10 that uh, distance is given by speed multiplied by time. So if you make speed the subject of the formula, you get distance uh, divided by time. The same is true about the velocity. So in this instance, our distance is the height, right? So we're going to have height. And then the time is the time, uh, is the 60 seconds we have there. So this will give us uh, 5.8 uh, meters divided by 60 seconds, um, seconds, right? If we put that back into the our equation, we'll get a power average uh, equals to, um, 12,250 multiplied by 5.8 uh, divided by 60. Uh, if I put that in the calculator, I get uh, 12,250 uh, multiplied by 5.8 meters divided by 60 seconds. Um, that gives me uh, 1,184 point one six uh, recurring uh, joules per second or watts right um let's move ahead that was that was 5.2 let's move to 5.3 uh, there's some more information given that says uh, the demolition ball is released from point r 
and strikes the wall at the lowest point of its swing. The ball then moves 0.25 meters horizontally into the into the wall before coming to a rest. So let's say 5.3 and then let's sketch that down. So we're moving from point R and then we hit the wall. After we hit the wall, we move uh, horizontally, right? Uh, that's what the information is saying. And then we come to a rest. So that is VF here, it's zero, right? And then uh, this um, horizontal movement, that's 0 0.25 meters. And then this height here is 5.8 meters, uh, like we already know. Okay, now the question for 5.3 says, uh, define the term conservative force. Um, a conservative force is a force in which the work done is independent of path. Uh, in our curriculum, I, the only forces that are conservative is natural forces, electrostatic, magnetic, and a gravitational force. All other forces are non-conservative. They depend on the path taken. So a conservative force is a force in which the work done is independent of path. Uh, let's move ahead. 5.4 says, is the force which the wall exerts on the ball a conservative or a non-conservative force? I already stated for 5.3 that the only conservative forces we have are natural forces. So a force that is exerted by a wall will thus be non conservative yes uh, let's move to 5.4 5.4 says oh no 5.5 i meant uh, my bad state the energy conversion that takes place during the downward swing of the head demolition ball uh, the downward swing is from uh, r until it hits the wall and then uh, they say we should ignore friction right uh, let's use uh, mechanical energy uh, we have uh, EP uh, plus EK at the top is equal to EK uh, plus EP at the bottom, right? At the top, uh, it's stationary, so EK is zero. So we only have EP. And then at the bottom, uh, we've uh, exhausted the height. The height is now zero, right? So our EK is the only thing we have. The EP is zero. So the energy conversion is uh, potential energy uh, to kinetic energy, right? Um, 5.6 says uh, using energy principle, calculate the magnitude of the average force exerted on the ball while it moves into the wall. Um, if you've watched other of my videos, um, I always say that usually 5.3 helps you answer 5.4 and then 5.4, 5.5, so on and so on and so on. So let's go ahead and try and apply uh, the same principle to this problem. 5.5, uh, we see that uh, at the top we have EP and then at the top we have EK. So if we can determine EP at the top to find EK, then we can find the velocity at the bottom, right? Uh, so here, yeah, uh, the V is zero and here the V is the max right for that gene. So let's just call it V Let's call it V2, right? So if we use uh, this formula That we have here EP equals to EK uh, We can determine this velocity, right? And then maybe we can you know see what we can do with that velocity but then uh, if you pay uh, close attention uh, we have VF, uh, we have this V2 here, and then we have the distance covered. So with that, we can calculate uh, the acceleration uh, of that motion, right? So we, we, we will have the acceleration, we have the mass of the object, and then we can just use F equals to MA to determine the force exerted, right? So, but then to find the acceleration, we first need to use uh, this formula here to find uh, V2. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we have EP equals to EK uh, from 
from 5.5 so ep is mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by height which is equals to 1 over q mv we're calling this 2 right squared so the mass 1250 gravity is 9.8 uh, the height is 5.8 and then 1 over 2 the mass is 1250 and then we have velocity 2 squared um if i i put the left hand side of my calculator i get um i get 70 1050 uh, which is equals to um 1250 divided by 2 uh, that is 625 uh, v2 squared right and then I can solve for V2 squared. So V2 squared uh, will be uh, 71,050 divided by 625. And then take square root on both sides. I'll get uh, V2 equals to, uh, let me put that in the calculator. Um, 71,050 divided by 625. Uh, that is 10.6 six two one meters per second and then i'm gonna use uh, these to find the acceleration for the uh, horizontal uh, movement here all right um i think uh, for clarity i shall drag this down so that uh, you can be looking at it while i'm solving it so okay 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 let's see let's see yes so now we have uh, v v2 so we're gonna have um we have okay let's see. we have v2 and uh, we have vf uh, we have delta x right and then we need acceleration uh no this is yeah what we need we need acceleration so the formula to use here is um vf squared equals to vi squared plus 2a delta x right uh, vf squared it comes to rest so it's zero v i is um 10.6621 we squared uh plus two uh, acceleration is what we are interested in and then multiply by 0 0.25 so we're gonna take this term to the left hand side uh, we're gonna get uh, minus 10.6621 squared equals to 0 0.5 acceleration I multiplied by 8 that's 2 multiplied by 0 0.25 so if you uh, make a the subject to the formula you will get uh, let me put that in my calculator real quick um, 10.6621 squared oh what's going on here uh, squared divided by 0 0.5 uh, that is 227.36 um, uh, meters per second squared right so now i have my acceleration i have my mass and i know i uh, fully well that f equals to ma so m is 1250 uh, the acceleration is 2 uh two seven there's a minus here uh two two seven uh point three six and then if i put that in the calculator i get um let me see one thousand two hundred and fifty multiplied by two two seven point three six i get um i get minus two hundred and eighty four thousand um 200 uh, newtons um that's it for this question um i know it looks a bit complicated uh, well it is so i'd advise you to uh re-watch the video again uh, just to wrap your head around what's going on